But why? Yeah, I think you're welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. Today's Monday show, uh, political segment of the show. Show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. Uh, Mondays, politico political discussions. Wednesdays are for the educative segment. And Friday is for Bible talks. Yeah, so I'm here with my Monday co host, Mr. Chofaya Muneye Neyembe. Uno pano. <laughs> How do you legit pronounce your name? Like for real? Yeah. It's Munyenyembe. 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 Yes, now, there, there are a lot of people in Malawi who actually say Nyenyembe. Ah, they remove the, the M. So the M is there. But actually, the spellings in some cases is M N. There's no U after the M. Ah. Yeah. But you know, in Malawi, the pronunciation like uh, uh, Mchinji, so the, the, the border town, yeah. the, the one next to Mwami, is, is Mchinji. Okay. The spelling is Mchinji. So from Zambia, you can call it Mchinji. It's M C H I N J. I can guess what they call it in Malawi. Mm. Mchinji. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so they remove the M. Yeah, the M sounds like an N. Why don't they say Alawi? And it's the opposite, huh? Why don't they say Alawi instead of Malawi? Mm. Since they're into removing the M's. <clears throat> no, unless in cases where there's uh, like an M U. A Ah, M U, not mm, not. Or M with like M N so C H. How, uh, how would they say music? No, not English <laughs> names. Music. <laughs> <laughs> hey Malawi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we are not pouring coffee today. I want some of our viewers to miss me. <laughs> oh. Actually, pouring coffee. Yeah. I think we need to do a collage of all the videos from the first of how we started the show, from the sipping to the pouring. <laughs> <laughs> to the ah, to the ah. <laughs> Those days before Chofia appeared in front of the screen, he was <laughs> still behind the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing, sir? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm a blessed young man. How was your week? Uh, my week was okay. My weekend was all right, too. I like the white oh, okay. wearing. It looks mm. very white. Oh, really? I don't know whether it will show in the camera as very white <laughs> or the color grading will distort it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it looks white. Okay. Anyway, you're welcome to the show. Um, podcast is available. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Um, yeah. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share. We're so grateful to every new subscriber that has come on board. We really love to have your engagement, whether you're commenting on uh, TikTok, you're leaving likes, you're telling us that we don't know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You we still, guys are ignorant. Uh, you guys are ignorant. We still you don't love say. your engagement. Yeah, that's we, what pushes us. Exactly. So we, we hope that if you are here for the first time, you are going to enjoy this show. Uh, and if you're not here for the first time, we hope that the video you watched before will not be as good as this one. <laughs> we hope to improve the quality with every single episode that comes and it's very encouraging to do that when we know that we have your support through your subscriptions, your likes, your shares, your comments, and everything else that you do to participate in this content. Please do also let us know what you'd like us to discuss on the show, especially for the Wednesday and Friday segments of the show, which are the educative and Bible talks. So we have a number of things to discuss uh, today over the past week. Uh, in form of news and what's been happening. To begin with, we'll discuss the prolonged dry spell. Uh, strangely, the news has... 
<laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Some, was on you, right? <laughs> some, <laughs> something just happened. <laughs> yeah, I think it was at me. <laughs> yeah, all right. Back to the news. <laughs> Secondly, we'll discuss unsuspecting uh, people are consuming dog meat. Uh, now, um, after which we'll discuss ECL being sued, and then we'll discuss the microlink accident. We'll give you an update on that, and then we'll give you a cholera update. I always like how I say cholera update, like it's mm. something fancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, give you a cholera yeah. update. Yeah, you make it sound <laughs> it's fancy. like an iOS update. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> From iOS 17 to iOS. <laughs> At least we can crack jokes about it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we can. Yeah, almost no one is dying. I saw yeah. the numbers. I saw the numbers earlier. We had as as of the last update, there were zero deaths in the facilities. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, as of the last. There was update. one death in the community, right? Yeah. Mm. So we can crack a few jokes about it. Uh, <laughs> we know that we almost never have zero cases at yeah. any point. Mm. What we have is breakouts, and then it goes back to the normal cases, and then breakouts, and then the normal cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we are getting to the normal stage. So now we are getting to the normal cases. It shouldn't be normal, but do you know that Zambia was once the dirtiest city central south central and southern Africa? Oh really? Zambia as a city? Yeah. Lusaka? Lusaka. Yeah, that's possible. It I could didn't know that. it could still be, I'm I'm not too sure, but it once was. Okay. The dirtiest city in central and southern Africa. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm. That's that's precisely why Monawasa began the Keep Lusaka keep clean, clean. Oh, keep, keep Lusaka yeah, clean. Okay. campaign. And yeah. I guess that's a reason why everyone who has come in power has tried to put in efforts mm. in making Lusaka clean. Mm. Yeah, have you noticed how hot it's been? Mm. I am yeah. almost beginning to believe in global warming. <laughs> you said this last time. <laughs> <laughs> like oh. I'm almost why beginning don't you believe in it, man? Global warming? Mm. I think I have many reasons. For, for starters, I think climate change you is, know a, is mm -hmm. a natural, worldly uh, uh, thing. The, the world should naturally warm up, I think, over so, time. Yeah, so when, you, when we say global warming, it sounds like we're just talking about each other. It's a change in weather patterns, right? So it's not only Ukukawa. When they talk about global warming... In some places, we've got uh, floods because of this. Yes. Floods but that the, are The unseen. problem... That for me is not that seen before. Mm. the problem for me is that the growth in the last 30 years for example mm -hmm. is not enough evidence to tell us that in the next 100 years people will die so that's i don't i don't mm. think the temperatures we have now are any strange so these are you, the normal temperatures we have in october do you believe in the studies by some scientists that this world will go extinct one day i believe in the <laughs> because of maybe, because, maybe because not, of our own actions, maybe not from a the way we are destroying the environment. Here's the thing: because I'm mm. a very strong uh, Christian, mm -hmm. a believer in the Word of God, I believe such a thing will happen, but due to different circumstances. Not due to our actions. Not due to our actions. I believe when the world does come to an end, it's because God would have closed Nish Company by Isala. No. But yes, but not necessarily due to our actions. I don't think we would have lived up to the point where our actions have destroyed the earth. Oh, you mean you and I? Of course, yes. No, no do you know what I mean mm. by that? I mean, no one on earth mm. would have lived to the point where they would have destroyed the earth before God would have finished this age. Okay. The signs of the end times, biblically, mm -hmm are almost telling us that we don't have enough time to have destroyed the earth. Mm, okay. Do, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, because 1,000 years ago, people were saying we're in the last days, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, no not, not, not really. Yeah, yeah, anyway, you could, you could say Sodom that. Sodom and Gomorrah? You, you could say Sodom and Gomorrah, no. Mm. Before, before, Sodom and Gomorrah was before Christ came. That was before Noah? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah is after Noah, but before Christ. Before Christ. Oh, okay. So Christ. Had so it's when Christ came that you started talking of the last days? Yes, because Jesus Christ himself is the one coming to finish the mm -hmm. age, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we've been talking about the last days for more than 2,000 years now. 
Yes, we've been talking about the last days for mm. more than 2,000 years. So who but knows, if, we'll go another 5,000 years. No, no, no. no. Mm. If you factor in the time that we were given, when mm. you factor in also the time since man's creation mm. till now, mm. we're almost clocking 7,000 years, which would be seven days to God. Um, if you talk about the distance between here and By the way, I'm very so not qualified for this conversation. But yeah, I'm enjoying but, it. I'm yeah. enjoying it. Yeah. Also, talking about how if Jesus left the earth and went to heaven, let's assume heaven had a geographical location mm -hmm. and it's, let's say, 500 light years light away, years, yeah. 500 light years away from here, or mm. that could be maybe like 10 million years, right? 500 light years must be around 10 million okay. years. If, if my calcul calculation is correct, we're not doing Bible talks today. Yeah. Don't we have uh, some devices from earth that have gone that far before? No. Really? No. Okay. No, we don't. So now... Which one is the furthest? Do you, do you know the, the distance I'm giving you when I say 447 year, light years? Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I'm getting this correct. That's mm -hmm. what they call Polaris, the North Star. The North Star is like mm -hmm. the northern point of, of space. The way we have a northern point of, of, of Earth. So light, year, light years, those are distances, right? Light years are the speed at which uh, light would travel. So no, light years are distances, just like kilometers. Yes, li that li light years are mm. distances measured by how fast light would travel from uh -huh, this point yes, to that exactly. point. Okay. So the the light year is given like light would travel from here to here, uh, f given this time. So that time mm -hmm. is a light year. But okay. when we bring it into real life, it becomes more, much more years. You understand, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So if Jesus Christ was going to, because the, the Bible says God dwells in the north. We'll start the show soon, but yeah. If Jesus <laughs> Christ was, was, for example, saying he's going to the north mm -hmm. and that's where heaven is, it would mean he has traveled about 10 million years from now. Mm -hmm. What that would mean is if Jesus got there and he began to describe here, he would be talking about it like, you know the way the Bible says a thousand years is like a day to God? Mm -hmm. Today, Jesus might be saying, yesterday I was on earth. Do you understand? <laughs> a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's Monday show, day. Monday show, Monday show. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do this I'll, yeah, I'll but do this anyway. on, on Bible Talks okay, to discuss yeah. it further. Yeah, we should. To, to give a, a more realistic understanding of of just what it means for Jesus to have gone, come back, when mm -hmm. he's likely to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to give a more realistic teaching on that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because, okay, we're talking about this because, for me, <laughs> in my lifetime, I've never seen a February that was this hot. Yeah? I've never seen a February like this. Excuse me. All Februarys since I was born, and I'm sure everyone who was born in the 80s or 90s, we've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? How long did it take for the equator to be classified as the equator or for the the savannah to be classified as savannah mediterranean i don't no idea but before they were not right they were these places had changed into those places i mean the weather we have now wasn't mm -hmm. what we had a thousand years ago in africa yeah probably yeah so if if we used to have summer in january mm -hmm. we now have it in october so it would take years to realign that. Okay. So my point is, the change we're experiencing now mm -hmm. is not telling us anything different in terms of temperatures. The same heat we're experiencing now is mm -hmm. what we would ordinarily experience in October, except we're experiencing it in February. But we experienced what, a lot of heat as well in October. What if, mm -hmm. I, I know, that's last year. We mm -hmm. haven't reached October this year. Mm -hmm. What if the, you know, because the world has been twisting for a while, what if the climate is simply changing the patterns in climate that is what is happening of course do you know what but i mean but most of these I mean things are influenced winter, by winter, our actions winter is going to change i hear what you're saying but these things of course that is what is happening but yeah. these things are influenced by our actions mm, yeah. i guess i guess so mm, but maybe they're in the ramaning is still I, I, I think i think they are probably influenced by our actions but i don't think it will reach a point of human extinction well if there's something that could, if the world lives to Five million years from now, probably yes. Oh, th that's probably why. Yeah, they uh, they approximate that five million years from now. The world, I think it's the more than five, it's a bi more than a billion years. I think. I think last I checked, five million years from now, okay. the world would incinerate itself. Mm -hmm. 
except for us to have reached five million years. By the way, mm. look at how much technology we have yeah, now. Yeah, that's the other thing I think. In of. in six thousand years, <clears throat> my friend, that's a lot of technology. By the way, viewers, when I say six thousand years, I'm not talking about the age of the Earth, but I'm talking about humankind mm -hmm. has been here for six six thousand years. The Earth obviously is much older, four billion years, but yeah. Anyway, so I don't. I don't. This part, I, I think, I think we're going to Bible talks. I'm afraid. <laughs> I know. This, this everything together. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, speaking of heat, we have a drought. At least we think we do. A bumper harvest remains uncertain, with the government stating that it is unable to predict this season's maize yield owing to the drought the country is currently experiencing. With the prolonged dry spells, <laughs> Minister of Agriculture Ruben Mutolo has expressed uncertainty of what lies ahead beyond the 2024 harvest, which is in four months' time. Mr. Mutolo said in a ministerial statement in Parliament today that the country is food secure for the time being, but there is a concern for the period beyond the next harvest. The country is food secure up to the next level. The concern, therefore, should be for the period beyond the next harvest. The measures put in place by the government so far appear to be adequate to ensure availability of the staple food in the near future, he said. Mr. Mtolo said 365, uh, 665,000.95 metric tons from the Food Reserve Agency, uh, 258,727,000. Hey, 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 that's a wrong way to read that number. 258,727,000. Oh, wow. Was that even correct? <laughs> No, the second one, I think. <laughs> the second one was correct, right? Yeah. Guys, you can read the number there, right? <laughs> I, I don't want to do a Jacob Zuma here. <laughs> <laughs> Metric tons, Mila's Association of Zambia, uh, and 25,273 metric tons from the Grain Traders Association of Zambia. In, the, in his statement, he also touched on other issues such as the importation of millimil containing genetic, genetically modified organisms. He said Zambia is a non-GMO country and is therefore not importing any GMO millimil for local consumption. Mr. Mdolo said the Zambia National Service and the private sector have been permitted to import and transit millimil for, for the Democratic Republic of Congo market to safeguard locally grown crop. I so much wanted to swallow <laughs> As I was doing that. Yeah, so <laughs> Mr. Mtolo so, is, is mm, Minister of Agriculture. Minister of Agriculture, right? yeah. He said uh, two things in there, of which we're in a serious situation. Okay? Yeah. This situation is very serious. I mean, we can't really see it now because we are going into what is usually a harvest season. Yeah. So we'll see it after that. That's when we'll see the big problem. Mm -hmm. So to me, I, I'm very disappointed to, for a minister to come instead of telling us about uh, solutions, viable solutions, or solutions that look viable, he's coming to tell us about what we have currently from the last harvesting season. And also assuring us that uh, since ZNS and other private individuals are importing GMO maize from other pl places and transiting, transiting it through Zambia to other countries, this will ensure that our own maize is secure. Yeah. Ah, to me, that's a wrong way of thinking because what we're about to go into is a crisis. Yeah. So I hope this is just a minister saying, I hope that we actually have a team that is working on this. What do you think can be done, though, if you thought about it from a layman's point so, of view? Yeah, so first of all, I'm saying I hope that there's a team. Mm -hmm. Because I, I can't claim to have the solution right now. Yeah. So I hope that there's a team that is working with the president to ensure that there's funds for relief. Look at that. Yeah. Because the people's maize, they are on gig. Yeah. Small scale farmers, they are on gig. And not only that, those small scale farmers are the ones that produce for the country. This, all this maize, you know that 95% uh, mm. of the maize at FRA is from the small farmers. Oh, yeah. The farmers yeah. in Chipata, the farmers in Southern Province. The Mumbas of this world. Yeah. Mm. So it's not like there are some commercial farmers who are doing maize for the country. It's these small-scale farmers. So all these big it's... irrigation farmers? No, 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 no. no. They do something else because maize is not as profitable to them. Ah, okay. So they're not doing maize. It's actually. now actually that there's a program that Wazungus are doing maize in, uh, I think, Central Province. Mm. And they did that maize because they wanted to export it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Actually, this came from from government. Government is the one that uh, is working with those guys 
to produce maize. So the initial plan was that they produce maize for export. Yeah. So it could be that naive in I don't know. So yeah. now, actually, what I've heard from the government as well is that the the other plan is to make sure that those guys who were farming that maize, the Bazungus and the commercial farmers who were farming for export, mm. because then they were using the irrigation systems and everything. Mm. Those guys would be made to sell to Zambians or to the FRA. So they would now, not be allowed to export. So it's it's hard to it's hard to say that. Yeah. I mean, won't they have to like put stiff regulations that so listen, directly prohibit So export? that that farming itself, it came because those guys wanted to okay, do maize okay, for okay, exporting. Okay, so the farming to begin with yes. was not was never meant to be exactly. for local supply. Yes. Okay. Now the government is coming up and telling us to say those guys will compel them now to sell to FRI instead of exporting as they I, thought I think in the it's, first place. it's okay provided the government is ready to spend as much as they would have made had they exported it. That's the other thing because as they export it, my friend, if you go to Kasumbalesa, yeah. maize is like three times the price that you buy it from here. Serious. Yeah. But then problem is subsidies. Because we've got these uh, IMF deals, are mm -hmm. we allowed to have subsidies on food? So that's another issue on its own, but uh, I don't know, and I don't think so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's one of the conditions IMF came with, right? The I don't know this the time. The of subsidies. I don't know. It could be. Because I IMF has got that history. Like a, you know, the thing is that, like a the thing is that the Ministry of Finance hid those conditions from us. Yeah. You but, see, but we can kind of say it's a precursor for the IMF, right? Because the IMF always do this. Yes. And they've messed up a lot of countries because of this. Exactly. Mm. Now, because the Zambian government also said in their plan, they don't plan for subsidies because it's not sustainable. Yeah. We're owing too much and blah, blah, blah. What's happening with the debt situation currently? How much have we reduced the debt burden since? I don't think so. We've only shifted it. <laughs> so what was... <laughs> What was what? What was the whole hype about increasing to reduce about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that what? The, by the way, did the you watch? The has been shifted. First of all, to uh huh. Did you happen to watch the interview? Veep. Did it happen? Yes, it happened. Mm. What was that? She's like? clueless. <laughs> <laughs> She's quite clueless. Uh, quite clueless. Eh? Yeah, about the whole thing. You see, simple things like they asked her about the interventions that the central bank is putting in place. I know she's not an expert, but yeah. she's the vice president. Yeah. Vice President Sanga can go zero. What is monetary policy ratio? Yeah. At least say something Vice about it. Vice President. The, a journalist asks you something that is connected to yeah. that. Say something about it. You are working with the governor. Yeah. Vice President says your monetary policy ratio. Can, but no, those, that's for economists. <laughs> that's for statutory reserve what's, ratio. What's a background, and by the she way? She doesn't know that and she doesn't know how it will affect the citizens. The Vice President. Huh? <laughs> What's her background? She's a teacher. Oh, she's a teacher. Mm. Mm. Would you happen to know what she was teaching? No, I don't. But you know, some of these things, you don't have to be an expert. Yeah. yeah. You just have to be exposed. Yeah. And also, if you got a loan and you don't know about the monetary policy ratio, the way it's going to affect you, and your loan has got fluctuating interest rates, then you got a source of Tengana loan. You got a loan to buy a vehicle, but you don't understand how these things will affect you. Mm. You find yourself paying in perpetuity. I think the Zambian public generally needs a lot of financial education. Yeah, true. To begin with, to have gotten a loan mm. to buy a car may indicate a problem in your financial knowledge. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the story for today. <laughs> by the way, if you like what you see, show it by pressing the subscribe button, notification bell, and leave a like. Yep. The president did have something to say about this uh drought situation he talked about having to cushion the situation through anyway you'll see it it is important to recognize that yes we have a drought now very unfortunate but we can flip the coin do two things one feed our people there's no question about that we have to readjust what we do our budgets our own domestic envelope envelope resource envelope and our partners' envelopes to be able to support the population that responded to our call to grow their own food. Does this give you any hope? No, not really. Why? Uh, Eco one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think there is much emphasis. The statement shouldn't have ended with him talking about how people should grow their own food. But, yeah, but <laughs> no, he said people who we told to grow their own food. I know. I'm just being okay. funny about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's all. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Okay. That part okay. is going to be there. 
It is definitely going to be there. <laughs> so, <laughs> guys, please cut this. Cut that. <laughs> you know. What okay. To do. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's go. So okay, anyway, fine. what I wanted to say is that it is uh, it is also not normal for a president to keep on telling us work hard, farm. Yeah, being yeah, too yeah, farming. Yeah. A president of a poor country telling his people to do irrigation. <laughs> no, tend to irrigate. Mm, guys. <laughs> it's like how the Minister of Finance kept suggesting other foods that we could eat, <laughs> apart from millimeter. Yeah, milk. recently, actually, we heard from uh, who's this Minister of Health, Sylvia Maseo, mm. saying that Shima is not actually so good for you, diabetes, what, what, what. Which could be true, yes. Yeah. But I mean, what in fact, we cannot do like yes, we know, but we also have German English in because. So they are tr- it, 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 they are trying to manage the expense because they've realized mm. they can't manage both expenses of subsidizing the midi meal mm. and providing medication for diabetes. <laughs> they can't do both. So yeah. one has to be done by the citizen. Uh, so anyway, we digress because of how the president comes out sometimes. For me, for now, what he said, I mean, if the head of state comes out like that to, to tell us that he knows there's a problem, by the way, excuse me, <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah. No, carry on, carry on. Yeah, by the way, this was at um, at it, this <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you have jokes. This, wow. this is <laughs> Thank you for that. What a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> so this was sort of an elite uh meeting, you know. Yeah. They're calling it economic growth forum something like that. So, Umumweze um, do those big, big shots. I can see the Andrew Chibuyas of this world there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, for the president to come out like this at this high level meeting, to me at least it gives us a bit of confidence to know that something is being done. Yeah. Of course, if you have to take what he said literally, he didn't say a lot of things. Yeah. He just said we need to do two, one thing to feed our people. Mm. And then we need to, maybe he talked about our resource envelope. We need to improve our resource envelope locally as well as for our partners. Mm. So, he, he said envelope, but go on. <laughs> no, but he corrected himself. <laughs> he did. <laughs> said envelope. envelope. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for now, what he said is just for showing the people that I am aware of what is happening and something has been done about it. Now, Mr. President, you are in power. And or you are in leadership. Now that he's in power, there are dry places. <laughs> you see? <laughs> yeah, but you, you see the place, the way it's looking. Mm. Imagine the losses that people have gone through. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, wha- it's quite bad. we're in a it's dire situation. Bad. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that as Zambians, we ignore these issues until it strikes. Mm. So until the problem comes, until medium you start getting expensive, that's when we'll know. Yeah. That upper man the problem you're heating up. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. It's it's crazy. We yeah. we only see the after effects. We deal with the consequences rather than the cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And wait, what, what's that thing about GMO maze and uh... Oh yeah, GMO. Uh, mm. this issue I believe started with Mwanawasa, mm-hmm. where the country abroad mm-hmm. uh opposing the idea of GMOs because g- g- genetically modified foods mm. tend to lead to uh, health issues. Okay, don't you consume a few things that have got genetically modified organisms? They may be, except they are not the staple food. Okay. So for something that is being eaten at such a large scale, it's it's better to be organic. Okay. Yeah. So, but in South Africa, they do GMO? It's possible. I'll tell you one place mm. where they do GMOs. America. And guess what? Mm. The second largest cause of preventable disease in America is mm. obesity. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Because of yeah. mm-hmm. so we know that cancers, obesity, uh, heart issues, all these things mm. stem from diet. Okay. So what I wanted to say is that right now we've got private individuals as and ZNS, as the minister said, yeah. and we're all aware of who is importing millimil from South Africa, yeah. GMO millimil, yeah, and transiting it transit eh? Transit eh? It's in transit. Transiting. It's in transit. <laughs> it's in transit. <laughs> to Congo. Transiting it <laughs> to Congo. <Yeah. laughs> so what I want to say is that, uh, so how are we sure that this maze or this mini won't end up on our market? No, I, I think it's not, it's no harm if it does end up on our market. Why? It's about, I mean, you could choose to go to South Africa and buy GMO mm-hmm. maize. Also, it's about preference. It's about preference. As long as you are being so told this is GMO. Pro- yes, they should be the provision. We have GMO mini in shops. 
mm-hmm. today. Oh, okay. Yes, because you can buy yellow maize, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, yellow maize, millimil. The only thing is that these things are expensive. No. Uh, they are sold in smaller quantities. They are not what the average Zambian would be mm-hmm. able to afford. Mm. Um, yeah, and also they pose health mm. issues. You know, Venus of no and worked with, there was a scandal. I know that we are not uh, talking about it today, yeah. but ZNS as they are importing this medium for export at one of their warehouses in Kasumbale. So some bags went missing. More than 200 bags of millimeter. More than 200 bags? Yes. I can almost we, gu- I can almost guarantee you that is going to one home. They've just been stored <laughs> in a room. Okay. For the next... Can you also guarantee me that that was an in- inside job? Because ZNS, military. W- without defaming them... Uh. I, I, Seems like an inside joke. It to could me. be. <laughs> ah, my friend, two hundred and uh, something bags. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, and they've got this, and these are GMO minimum. Mi- ah, yes. And these are guys with guns. Yeah, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> now, to me, I think this this Did, minimum. Have you ever watched that video? If she's cheating on a police officer. Mm-hmm. Who carries a gun? <laughs> what about you, my robot? <laughs> who just moves with a laptop? <laughs> <laughs> You don't say. <laughs> so anyway, my point are two that one, right now we've got GMO mini meal yeah. on the market. Because those guys who store most likely they are going to sell on the Zambian market. Mm. I don't know, maybe they're going to export it, but somehow they could sell it on the Zambian market. Two is that how people who have guns. Mm. Or given that last time someone died. Yeah. On a more disturbing note. <laughs> oh, that wasn't disturbing enough. No, no, no. <laughs> this is more disturbing. <laughs> Yeah, dog meat. You know, I, it's a picture for me. It's a picture they used. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought that people are eating it unawares. Yeah. It's, it's a very, yeah, on a more uh, disturbing note, the Veterinary Association of Zambia has revealed there is a thriving illicit market for dog meat in the country. Association President Malcolm Chioba says the meat is mostly disguised as goat meat to unsuspecting customers at some public drinking places. Mr. Chioba says the worrying cases require urgent stiff government controls in the sale of meat products in order to protect the public from consuming meat from unconventional sources like dogs. He has since offered guidance by calling for stringent measures by local authorities to ban the slaughter of animals at drinking places and restaurants. Instead, it it be strictly done at designated points under the supervision of veterinary services. Yes, yeah, so uh, he does have a point. He does have a point. I think there should be regulation on where animals are killed and b- before they eventually sold to the to the end user. We see a lot of uh, goat killing uh, rituals before people buy goat meat right at the stand. And I guess this can be a cause for concern because we don't know exactly what this meat is being mixed with. Especially for you who love me job. Mm? <laughs> yeah, to me, if they're killing the goat, you're there and then you start cooking it, maybe that's better. I think the concern is that uh, there is a lot of room for play when they kill it right there. Because when they when they kill it, they might take it to the back room for washing or what if they just bring the the, the mixed meat? It's mixed <laughs> with dog and the, and goat. How are you going to know? Actually <laughs> actually that yeah, that makes sense. If they bring the yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, actually, uh, the vet, uh, we've got the vet, we, I don't know, Veterinary Association of Zambia. I mm. hope I said that right because oh. I won't say it again. Yeah, so many, so many things you didn't say right about that. But yeah, go it's on. okay. It's still a random dream. But vet, they gave a revelation that uh, we've got thousands of dogs crossing the border from Congo okay. being imported and vice versa. For the purposes of Food? Yes. By the way, is it safe to eat a dog? So, if, if, if you have to eat a dog, I'm sure it has to go through some tests, just like every other animal. Yeah? Yeah, you can get a, a anthrax from a cow. Ah. Yeah, but cow is something that we always do. Yeah. They discourage this because you get zoonotic diseases. Uh, what's that? Uh, so, these are like rabies. I almost, I wanted to check here whether, I don't know whether we're able to do that. To check what? The dangers of eating dog meat, but anyway, go on. Oh yeah, like rabies, you could get rabies. You could from get rabies by eating dog meat. Yes, mm. uh, unless I'm mistaken, but we can check. But is it generally considered unpalatable? It's not something that should get into here in our country. Yes, of course. Are, are there people in the world that safely eat dog meat? The Chinese, yes. 
they actually package it and mm. sell it in stores normally. Mm. Yeah, but the other thing is that here in Zambia, they consume dog meat. The Chinese people have been with Zambians who are consuming meat before. Okay, do you guys have that? Who are consuming this meat? dog meat before? You, you have some details on that? Okay, it's fine. Yeah? Yeah, so, I mean, for us, it's not in our culture, really. And also... These guys who are killing these dogs and selling it to unsuspecting people, they are not <laughs> they are not going to test them for diseases. Yeah, and it's also not like these people are going to taste the delicacy. Mm, saying we are going out to taste dog meat. They are being given this meat unawares. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because if you are made aware of Nimbwe, at least that is bad. If you're made aware and you decide Yes, to, you decide to taste the onde for Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, but then it's not really in our culture because for us, dogs are regarded as a, a man's friend, you know, <laughs> this kind of pet. <laughs> is, and that, all that. is that really the reason? <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you noticed that in our culture, somehow a dog is viewed a certain way? For example... Oh, yeah, also, <laughs> the other way, like, yeah, like, like, and like, clean, if, like if you are referred to as a dog, mm -hmm. it would be way answer. more offensive than being called a goat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Like, uh, yeah. So I think it's those connotations. Have you heard that... mothers in the companies shouting at their at their children? Mm. <laughs> Some of us grew up like that. <laughs> A combination of names. <laughs> yeah, I once watched the comedy video of a father telling <laughs> of a of a of a son asking his father. Uh, Dad, I hear your 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 dad is unwell. Is unwell. Is he going to die? And then he said, "Thunder fire you! It's your father who will die." Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> your father will not die in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, generally, I think that we've consumed uh, not we, but I don't know. <laughs> this has been there for a very long oh, time. Oh yeah, these are things we've heard of. Yeah. I guess some big shots about... actually arrested. There's someone near Matero who made such a big thing for goat meat. And then they ended up kind of up for him. Ish. And that man was arrested. Crazy. Very popular name. Crazy. Yeah. Woo. Anyway. So, so I meant my Naimba chopo. Yeah. But of course it's not good to eat to eat imbo without you being taught. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, I think you that find the, that there's a peace. There is a piece in your gut meat that just feels strange. It's like, yeah. It's because you saying. know, if you Google about the kind of meat, it looks a bit different from goat meat. It's darker, it's more fatty, hmm. and, other, <laughs> and other things. But there's no way where you read that it's cow, Amaganya. <laughs> they tell us everything except that it's not nice. Even in these reports, so we don't know if it's not even, nice. Even in these reports where someone has been arrested for mm. eating dog meat uh, or selling dog meat, mm. they say everything except that it's not nice. <laughs> yeah. And the way we've not heard of anyone being arrested for eating. Oh yeah, yeah. On, only for selling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. N neither have we been asked for a review. Have you? Have you been given a review <laughs> yeah. by someone who ate? <laughs> yeah. To me, you know, the worst part in all this mm. is for the legit, or should I say, the genuine goat meat traders. Yeah. Because now, with this story, a lot of people will be shunning goat meat, especially when you're at Mitchell Postans. And you know, goat meat already has issues. Yeah. So they'll be shunning it to be thinking that, uh, <laughs> so the ones that will suffer, and you imagine Supia girl. Now we come on to chili and to onion. But I'm sure I don't think of no more. Not to green pepper. <laughs> Crazy. Hi. <laughs> we are never told about the taste. Yeah, no one, no one will tell you because no one will accept. Yeah, me. it's just the thought of it. You, mm. you guys saw the picture. But you know, some people actually say that. But you also could pass ten pen and pen and jab a gold meat. Can I make a, <laughs> I make a different? Was it? <laughs> the texture of the meat was a bit different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there was uh, one of the god traders. Uh, this lady trades in gods. I hope it's entirely gods. <laughs> 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 yeah, I had a few suggestions to give. Hello, I'm my wife. This is business. Lipstick, punch this. She, you guys need to see her lips. Nani ma veti? Bafunu kana ba vazita social ba vazita kusa ve. Eh, ba pita amo ba ona pe ma pulisi ni amani ya maya branchi. Ba jamani ma pa munga pa nuti na mna pa yambuzi ba funika ba ona inimbuzi. I iningombe i nichan. I iningumba ba funika na ve vatris. Duty ya wote chita munga inikangali. Mbobe me wa veti. Diamani funika chita kusa ve munga i. Kefu manatikuisa jambe vinyama. Si kwa kumewa ndo guri si. 
Kolo kwa mnyo ndo pa ili afitika kusa bembuzi Tizu wa takusa ta series So ya maproblem isha pisi kila kusa ogoro Meba nga pa ili samuwe ya Wa indo wa sika nza naja nyamaya mbuzi testinga ziu Did you see the lipstick? <laughs> By the way, if you were to eat a dog, what breed would be acceptable for you? For me? Mm. Are you a dog person? Do you love dogs? I told you in our first show that yeah, I love dogs as security. So, you know, that's the other thing. We, we, had, talked about, such we, had, we had talked about this before? On my first show, yeah. On your first show coming here? Yeah, when I was a guest, actually. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I like dogs for security. And I only like one breed of dogs. I wouldn't even fathom it being a po- in a pot. <laughs> it's meat, <laughs> a German shepherd. <laughs> but if I could eat a dog, I probably would choose a boa boo. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it's steaky. Yeah, <laughs> got a lot of flesh. There are parts you can cut to grill. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> also don't, looks like it would don't take, do this at home. <laughs> also looks like to take in spices so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, her suggestion was, as we earlier mentioned, that they should. Um, kill the gods, almost say dogs, gods from somewhere else before they are actually transported to the places yeah. that will be sold. But we debunked that mm-hmm. and said, if that happens, then maybe it might be a bit more confusing to know which of the pieces is a dog <laughs> and which of the pieces is a god. Actually, her suggestion, uh, she's talking about the Bavet. Yeah. <laughs> I come back to Bavet. <laughs> <laughs> Veterinary. <laughs> Veterinary. <laughs> Veterinary. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. She's suggesting that Bavet, the Wafunga was Pitam. Okay. Was making a shoe at it. And to a member good is as own and in Boozy or the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what she's suggesting because uh, Mongakchu or Yakuja never did. Ah, Kuja, if they have, there's foul play coming from there. Mm. Ah, there's, there's, this syndicate is very bad. Then it means that there's a, another place where they're killing dogs, and then they just bring and mix them up there. Oh, so there's a place where the mixture happens, uh, probably af- after both. So both are killed separately. Then, yeah. If this if if this, if this operation is coming from places like that, because mm. the Chihuahua part is well known for goat meat and they slaughter from there, so everyone sees that these are goats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if those guys are oh, you've are actually in this, been to Chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, no, he, he was looking for gods. You <laughs> don't say. For gods. Yeah, I yeah, went got, around. I've been to that Christmas, place where Christmas they kill period. goats. Christmas period. Christmas period. Yeah, he was looking for yeah, gods. Yeah, we needed gods. Yeah, Chibolia is a very wonderful. Well, how place. do you rate the quality of the gods you got from there? Oh. <laughs> 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 They almost got me choked. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the goats were high grade. <laughs> high grade. <laughs> wow. Wow, sir. What a time to be alive. Yeah, bro. Moving, moving on. Like this. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, yeah, the goats were high quality, high grade. <laughs> high grade goats, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the goats were good. So, those guys, uh, I think, were well, innocent, you know, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway if they are in on this then they have another separate place that we've not been to yeah yeah because i was just looking for god yeah i Cri- think god Chris- looks for dogs period. yeah, yeah. Uh, mr lungo has <laughs> been sued <laughs> the emphasis, <laughs> the emphasis <laughs> on christmas period they need to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah between christmas and new year because of a week right? yeah so mr lungo has been sued um Lusaka businessman Happy Mwangata has sued former Republican President Edgar Lungo over his alleged failure to settle 366,000 <laughs> kwacha <laughs> debt owed to him for the, <laughs> for the supply of campaign materials in 2016. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're just... <laughs> in his affidavit, verifying debt at a small claims court in Lusaka, the complainant says the campaign materials applied to Mr. Lungo include branded caps and wrist watches. According to Mr. Mwangata, he had made several demands to meet Mr. Lungo in person during the period he was in office and after he left, but was blocked by his assistant, whom he only has identified as Mr. Chanda. Mr. Mwangata now wants the court to compel the former head of state to pay the debt. Uh, you know, it's funny that he, they say he identifies Mr. Lungo's assistant only mm-hmm. as Mr. Chan. Mm-hmm. Reminds me of some song I heard some time back. Mm. Uh, I think I must have been on a bus years mm. back mm. where there was a line where the guy says, say my name, 
mm-hmm. and the girl says wachanda <laughs> <laughs> really the <laughs> 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 yeah it's a cover belt song one of those unfamous songs <laughs> yeah so mr lungo is in the news again he's being asked to pay for why do they decide to brand watches mm. and pins Imagine in campaigns, isn't that During a waste Rupia of money? Banda, I, I, think, Bamba, I think Rupia Banda. Because it's my underwear. Sorry, Bamba is allowed. Yeah, Bamba is. So, have you, have you, have Bamba, you seen that guy who sells boxers it, and Bambas in in in? Is it still market? there? I don't know if he still is, but mm. I I used to see him on okay. social media. Oh yeah, I used to see him as well. Yeah, yeah, he did well with his business, so I doubt if he's still. He did, eh? And mm. he always had clean boxers. Somehow, he wear his bottoms. Mm. Oh, you went to pass there? Where you can see. And no, you no, just no. saw from afar? On, on, yeah, Christmas period. Okay. I went to buy and clothes. And you saw that they were so clean? I went to buy clothes for Christmas. Ah, okay. I happened to stumble upon his boxers. Ah, great. And noticed that they were quite clean. Okay, good. Way to put me in an awkward position. <laughs> 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 yeah, we plan a lot of things on this show, but you just laugh. Yes, you choke up. We didn't plan for it. Oh yeah, that one wasn't. Because it's been long since I laughed like that. <laughs> yeah, that that isn't. I didn't know I had the script. I didn't know I could do it in front of the camera. I know. <laughs> yeah. Do, anyway, do we really Mr. need to? Lungu. Yeah, mm. go on. Anyway, <clears throat> do go we on. really need to? No, no, go on. Okay. Yeah. So our mm. So it shows what kind of leadership we had. Someone who would run away from Congo, even if he's the president. <laughs> So, mm. putting one Mr. Chanda in front of the debtors. Yeah. And you can imagine, this uh, guy supplied them in 2016. Oh, and wow. And only got to report in 2024. This was 2016? Yes. I'm sure he was promised like a uh, something. Yeah. Uh, Microlink update. We've been giving you a lot of updates over the past few weeks, but we haven't really given you much in terms of details of what's going on. We know that uh, in January, which was last month, we had a couple of people trapped in the third, is it third shaft of a mine? Mm, you're getting to we, know this thing? Yeah, I know. Oh, that's and good. Uh, the shaft three was filled with water uh, to the extent that the, the miners were, were unable to be retrieved. We also know that the robot that was expected from South Africa is in the country, but has failed to perform the tasks it was given. Uh, notwithstanding the assembly, it took a lot of time. But yeah, some families of trapped miners at Microlink Resources Zambia Limited are irked with the prolonged retrieval of miners who have been trapped underground since 22nd January 2024. The tragedy happened after an aquifer ruptured and flooded Shaft 3. See, I got that right. Where the <laughs> miners were Indeed. operating. Yeah. The families feel the process has taken longer than, longer for them to know the fate. Speaking to Diamond News in Dollar, family representatives say that they are recognizant of the efforts made, but the process has taken longer, causing panic among them. The miners trapped have been identified as John Mumba, Sevia Musa Nshiko, Musa Nshiko, Peter Mulenga, Blessing Selemani, Teddy Chilukutu, and two Chinese nationals identified as the names are hard to read. They mean, oh, the Chinese? Yeah. J- <laughs> Jadi. Li Kang and <laughs> Zhang Li Bin. Li <laughs> well, I, I don't know how to pronounce those names, but yeah, uh, these guys were trapped on the 22nd of January, which was last month, uh, almost about a month now. More than a month. Uh, more than a month now, actually. And even though the families are saying, anyway, I do understand the breath with which the families speak when they say we want to know the fate. Yes, closure. There's the closure that's needed. You know, you don't want to have a funeral without the body. Mm. It's it's just not the right order of things. Mm. And so um, the good thing is that we have some form of a response now. Which you know that, uh, by the way, sorry to take you back. These yeah. guys have actually been making funerals. Let me tell you a story. Yeah. There's actually someone in the Sensei mine accident yeah. that happened last year yeah. who has not been found. And their house has been a funeral house from that time. Are you serious? Until now. Yes. Actually, I was hearing from the family and they were saying, I know Papa to have an to a pitra po fira fina by seven to a four cocolida by a by seven. It's like if I don't wow, That's yeah, crazy. because you know, some people believe that, especially if someone is within, unless maybe a fira ku Russia or a fira yeah, ku yeah, yeah. Ukraine, a cafe ramon of a funa moon, a body, I can fuki. 
That's yeah. when they will conclude yeah. with the funerals. Some people. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That's that's really bad. And especially yeah. for the Chinese nationals, I wonder, do the families even know? You know. Oh, I've been seeing uh, some Chinese people in these uh, press briefings, ah, which okay. they are saying okay. Okay. Uh, are the family. Okay. Yeah, so okay. probably yes. Okay. A human yeah, being is a probably human being. business families, but yeah. Mm. Uh, good thing is we have received some form of an explanation or response to uh, the status of events at Microlink. Check it out. The robots came and they started their operations. They all of last week. To cut the story short, the robot did not succeed also to retrieve the people because of uh, the situation which they found um, underground. Yeah, so that is the Minister of Copper Belt Province uh, giving an explanation as to how the robot came and failed to perform the duty they expected it to perform due to the intensity of the situation. But he, he gave a further explanation. The last option is, uh, of course, backfilling the, the, the shaft. And thereafter, they'll try to take out the old material and then retrieve the people. Because from what what was found when they were when they used the robots, that they sit at under the water. Yeah. So that is the only option. For the families, all they need is a closure. <laughs> Do you suppose that there is something about journalism in Zambia, the way it's taught, mm. that prompts them to speak a certain way? The way it's taught, no. But the way it's practiced, maybe. The way it's practiced? Yeah. For some families, all they want <laughs> is a closure. <laughs> yeah. I think that uh, the way that they practice it, it's yeah. just like a kamakaucha. It's, it's a culture. Eh? It's like the way the police speak in Zambia. <laughs> and so, yeah, so this is uh, the status at, 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 at Microlink. Of course, we know that the mine is not closing. They will still be operating. So mm -hmm. one way or another, they have to resolve this issue. They, yeah, because, yeah, because this backfilling that the minister is talking about, if I heard him correct, because of course we, we couldn't play the whole press briefing yes, that yes. He, when he met the family. I think he said it would take something like three months, if I'm not mistaken. Serious? Yeah, now three months is too long. Yeah. Mm. That, that might become a barrier site. Be because, I mean, if people are, especially where there is water and mm. sand. But you see, that shaft needs to be operational at some point for business for them. Yeah, so but they won't let it go like that. You, you know what I mean? <clears throat> if someone stays three months mm -hmm. where there is sand oh okay okay, dirt, okay i understand they become part of the okay yes oh. so what you'll be retrieving now is bones and it, it, most likely they are not together they'll anymore. be disintegrated uh, yeah that's that's the challenge anyway, i could be wrong that, that you said three months long. maybe you said three weeks but still three weeks is a long time three weeks they've it's been, been down there it's since been, a, it's been of a month January. already and you know the heat that's down there mm. could lead to comp decomposition quick Quickly, decomposition yeah, yeah mm. so we can only pray we can only pray. Pray that. But our, our prayers and thoughts are with the families. Yeah, of course. Yes. The family. Um, yeah, color update. <laughs> the fancy word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's not much of a change in terms of the, 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 the cholera numbers, as we can see, as of the last update, which was 23rd of February. There were zero well, Last deaths. time the deaths were 660 something, eh? Yes, uh, 668. Six, 668 or 661, something like that. Yeah, some... Oh my goodness! The, the 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 last the last one is quite far. Okay. But, yeah, but so we've added about twenty deaths now. We've added approximately twenty deaths uh, since the last update. Mm -hmm. But as of this uh, this day that we were given an update, mm -hmm. we had zero deaths in the facility and one in the community, which of kind of yeah, which kind of brings us back to the normal situation. You said we, we had one in the community and zero in the in the facility. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Which which kind of brings us back to the normal. <coughs> flow kind of that we have for cholera uh, well we're almost getting to that part yeah. and to me i think i attribute this to the vaccine yeah and i heard the minister of course when she was giving this update she also mentioned that we received an additional 1.9 million about 2 million vaccines nice so just, yeah uh, if you notice the map as well yeah. it looks a bit cleaner now huh? it does the red <coughs> is no longer there Ooh. luapula is almost free yeah it's free i mean i can't see anything in luapula 
nothing in Wapula. Mm. Um, Southern looks good. Northern also looks good. Yeah, Mchinga yeah. looks good. Lusaka, on the other hand, I think Lusaka, Lusaka needs to do Lusaka is thin and parts of uh, Lusaka needs Southern. to do a, a lot of work also in terms of uh, anyway we we we've, we've discussed these things. Mm either relocating or just dealing with drainage systems. But no, that's a long story, yeah. Yeah, but, but we, we have <coughs> comprehensively discussed this before. And the other thing is that those shallow wells, they're still there. They're still there. Yeah. And people are saying we can't bury them because we don't have any source of water. The president has a lot on his hands now, eh? Drought, mm, millimil, yeah. <coughs> uh, um, football. <laughs> what is happening with football? <laughs> we, we, we were knocked out of the Africa Cup oh. somehow. <laughs> Somehow, no, it contributes to the environment. <laughs> it contributes to the environment in the country. Oh. Like all these negative things contribute to how people are viewing the president. To me, the biggest thing on his hands right now is the drought situation. Yeah. These other things like cholera right now has been tackled for the medium term, short term and medium term. Mm. We know that this thing will come back. Mm. Once vaccine as you're saying is a cholera, is a bad mm. So it might come in three years' time. We'll remember. Then we'll need booster shots. Maybe. Then we remember to say, HH but you work on the shanty compounds, you work on the unplanned settlement, settlements, mm. you said no more shallow wells. Mm. So we we'll remind him, even if he's as a Gankaran president. Yeah. Mm. Just as we are reminding Lungo, even though he's not the president. Yes, yes. <laughs> you need to take responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go to Nchwala? No, unfortunately, week? I didn't. Yeah, I celebrated it in Lusaka. I, I, I thought you would be. Yeah, you know, life happens. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I wish I went. I saw pictures of white people at the Nchwala. I, I saw some, some good pictures, and actually. Yeah, they were yeah that's the, that guy is the, the British High Commission. Oh, that's that's British Yeah, High Nicholas Woolley. Nanga, you match and manda we are. Crazy. So, yeah, anyway, that's a, a run-through of what Nchwala looks like. JJ. We can see JJ kneeling in the president. all of the president. <clears throat> Uh, so many will come back. What are you? What a time to be alive. Did you Upper enjoy? Upper man, you're looking very humble. Huh? I know. Mm. Did you enjoy the show? Yeah, I did. We have come to the end. Really? Have you realized? I didn't even realize it. <laughs> We've done more than one hour already. Yeah, we have. About one hour. We have I done. We we in. Yeah. Anyway, we have done around the length of. <laughs> <laughs> of this show <laughs> yes so yeah. uh, please every do, day I'm getting used to this me too me too please do subscribe hit that notification bell and share I think that's why number <clears throat> that we're on camera eh? yeah <laughs> yeah and um, yeah please do let us know what you think about the show leave your comments in the comment section um, do follow our Facebook I believe the links to everything is in the in the in the description uh, follow our Facebook we have a Facebook page amazing minds um, you can follow mr Chofia here um, Chofia Mnyonyembe. I think all the names and whatnot are always put at the beginning of the show yeah yes so yeah we're glad you watched this we hope you liked the show we loved mm. it we enjoyed and it shout out to all the TikTok followers shout out yeah TikTok is is loving the show yeah Yes. All right. We shall see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.